Here he comes. Whoops. Ooh, I beg your pardon. Ralph Edwards? Yeah, that's right, McGruff. It's the 10th anniversary of all of us working together to prevent crime. McGruff, this is your life. What a thrill! Years ago, you began teaching people to get involved with each other and the police. Remember this? You helped us start a neighborhood watch. Our antennas went up and crime went down. Hey, Phil! How you doing, McGruff? <laughs> Later, you helped kids stay drug-free. Let me get wasted. Why don't you get real? I've got a better idea. Why don't you get lost? Hi, McGruff. Hey, McGruff. You guys may be proud. Come on, everybody. It's been a great ten years, but there's more to do. Clean up neighborhoods, make drugs disappear. How do you start? Write for my free booklet. Now, everybody say, Take, take a, a bite, bite out of crime. Crime dog McGruff, this is your life. Couldn't do it without. There have been so many attempts at keeping kids away from doing things that their own parents took part in, like having premarital sex, or smoking, or skipping school, or in this case, crime. Shoplifting was a common occurrence for teenagers for the longest time, and hell, it still may be today. I don't know. I'm not a teenager, I don't have teenagers, and I don't even know any teenagers, so I'm not really what you'd call in the loop. To combat these issues, an advertising company was often approached to create a campaign of some kind to get the kids excited about the prospect of doing the opposite of the thing they were being told not to do, which as we know, kids love to do. Many, many, many mascots were created for these campaigns. Not many of them memorable in the slightest, and often many of them only presiding in the auditoriums of schools, lecturing the kids on the evils of whatever it was they were presenting to them. But one of these mascots did stick around, for a little while anyway, and his name was McGruff the Crime Dog. Hey, McGruff here. See that guy? He's stealing that bike. Now, see that lady? Bike theft. She's calling the cops. This is Mimi Marth, part of the Eyes and Ears Patrol of Hartford, Connecticut. There's 126 of them. Regular people like you and me working together against crime. Here's another one, Albert Bell. Yesterday, it was his turn to patrol. Halfway down a block, Albert sees a strange man nosing around a Barnett's basement window. Gray jacket. So, Albert calls the cops, fast. And the cops pick the guy up, fast. Way to go, Albert. You know, when it comes to preventing crime, people like Mamie and Albert really make a difference. So could a person like you. Find out more. Write to Box 6600, Rockville, Maryland, and help uh, take a bite out of crime. McGruff was created by Sherry Nemmers and Ray Crevassi in 1979 for the Dancer Fitzgerald sample, an advertising agency with a hell of a name. His main goal was to increase crime awareness and personal safety in the United States, and your community specifically. He was given his iconic name via a contest from the agency, which they ran on the backs of cereal boxes, as you do with any very important issue. Sadly, in the end, he was not named Sherlock Bones, as so many suggested he should be. But I guess we should just let sleeping dogs lie, eh? He essentially was simply superimposed over footage of suspicious activity, crimes, children being kidnapped and the like, informing the viewer that if they see something of the sort, they should immediately contact the police. And yes, there is romantic fan fiction written about McGruff that pairs him up with Smokey Bear. I know. I do the research so you don't have to. You're goddamn welcome.
Designed primarily after television detective icon Columbo, he was voiced by one of his own creators, Jack Keels, who had a naturally old-timey detective voice that one doesn't achieve unless they do nothing but smoke cigars and drink whiskey all day. His voice was perfect because he sounded like someone wise enough to be listened to, but not so overbearing that you grew sick of him. And in addition to his regular spots, he also sat at a piano in one piece and belted out a nifty little ditty that I guarantee didn't stop anyone from taking drugs, but at least he tried. McGruff here. I want you to learn a song that tells people to say no to drugs. Users and losers and losers and users. I don't use drugs. Don't use drugs. Come on. If you know we use you even part of the time. Tell them to quit, take a bite out of crime. Users are losers and losers are users. I don't use drugs. Don't use drugs. Now, teach it to everybody and help take a bite out of crime. In fact, he released an entire album called The Smart Kids Album. You can listen to this whole thing on YouTube, and I highly suggest that you do, because a goddamn. And if you think this is the only one, you are dead wrong. Burger King, yes, the Burger King, put out multiple albums following this one, and they are all both amazing and horrifying. Take a listen, if you dare. In fact, McGruff proved so damn popular that eventually, by 1988, about 99% of kids between the age of 6 and 12 recognized him. He became a staple, a fixture of pop culture instantly, appearing in TV series, parades, and even full-body fursuits were made so that he could make full-on public appearances. I swear, between this and Chuck E. Cheese, somebody in the 80s made a fucking fortune on fursuits. I'm so damn proud of that person. However, by the 90s, his popularity and thus his appearances began to wane, and with the police taking aim at more mature targets that a cartoon dog wasn't exactly a good fit for, he simply began to be phased out entirely. He still pops up here and there, informing, I'm assuming, senior citizens at this point about things like internet crime, but he's more or less been taken behind the shed and put down. According to Wikipedia, the McGruff House Program was a designated temporary safe haven for children in emergency situations. Created in 1982 in response to the abduction and murder of five children. These were run by people in the neighborhood, in houses and apartments, and children would be educated at school and community events to go to these houses if they felt threatened or in need of help. In February 2012, however, the program was shut down after nearly 30 years, mostly because of a multitude of combined reasons, including tightening budgets and the need for them simply declining with the advent of cell phones. McGruff was ultimately killed by the only murderer we cannot stop, time and nobody called the cops. McGruff was a great example of a character being invented for a sole purpose and then utilized for that purpose in an excellent way. And yet, despite all his popularity, despite kids recognizing him about as much as they did Ronald McDonald, despite his references within the canon of pop culture, McGruff is nothing more than a memory, really. Like most of the mascots we see come and go on this show. McGruff outlived Jack Keels, who died on August 25, 2017, at the age of 94. 
McGruff is a bit like Chuck E. Cheese in the sense that he's still technically around, with a running Twitter account, a YouTube page, and his own online store. All right, well, do you remember that crime-fighting dog named McGruff, who was frequently featured in public service announcements that were targeted at children? Well, maybe this will jog your memory. In a hilarious turn of events, a man named John R. Morales, who used to perform McGruff in the full body suit, was arrested in 2011 in Galveston, Texas, after, and this is also ironic, a drug-sniffing dog found pot on him during a write-up for a speeding ticket. The police then went on to discover diagrams of indoor pot growing operations, a plethora of marijuana seeds, and when they finally raided his house, seized in excess of 1,000 plants and 9,000 rounds of ammunition for 27 varying weapons, including a goddamn grenade launcher. Morales, who was 41, was sentenced to 16 years in jail. McGruff took a bite out of crime, but crime is unstoppable. No matter how iconic, no matter how good a mascot, in the end, crime will always triumph over a brand. And sometimes the most we can hope for is that if you didn't win the battle, you at least helped in fighting it. McGruff turns 40 this year, which is 280 in dog years, which makes McGruff kind of old. And one can only hope that after such a hardened career, that he's somewhere resting his weary justice-seeking head his leg twitching ever so slightly as he dreams of his next arrest.